Welcome back to Burgundy Drip Gold Trim. If you're here for the first time, please make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Definitely make sure after you subscribe, you hit the notification bell. Now let's get right into this video. Back with a drip that hits and a trim that fits so eloquently well. Curated and styled by me, yours truly, Mr. Royale Black. Back at it again. Second straight week in a row, we will not be putting our left hands up. But this week, it was a much better performance. I must say, had to give credit where it's due. First to Sam Howe from bouncing back. Don't let any, didn't let any of what the media, what social media, anybody was saying, saying to shake him up and rattle him up. There were a few things cleaned up. Of course, we already know what the most glaring issue with our team is and it's that offensive line and i know i've seen some people still trying to push the narrative of oh sam took like four sacks but the sacks wasn't based upon him holding the ball it was pressure and like a lot of linemen was being pushing the sam and some guys were able to get through like cause cause me that right side cause me and wiley wiley is so uh, oh my god I, I really wish we invested more money elsewhere outside of cars. I mean, that 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 was not a good. It's not so far. It's not looking good on that side of the field. Cosme was getting pushed around as well, and you know a lot of people feel like Cosme is the best on our line, but he was getting pushed around, and they even sent some some blitzes from the second level with the linebackers. So they were finding other ways when they couldn't get initial pressure to get it, and they got it up on us. Um, the run game wasn't as effective. Fourteen carries from Brian Robinson. AG had a few carries, a few yards. It wasn't as effective. But um, we, we did make some plays. Like when Sam had some time, he showed some poise in the pocket. He didn't show he was rattled. He showed he can come out. And Sam has shown to be um, pretty efficient as far as his passing go outside of those that four interception game. You know, if, if Sam doesn't really have a four interception game, you know, and let's just say he didn't even score last week, he would probably have a, a four to one touchdown ratio right now. Or, Four touchdowns, one interception. But besides that, um, yeah, I really wanted to see to get get the ball to the playmakers early, and we did get the ball to Terry often and early. I still wish he had a few more targets, even though he had, he finished with eight catches. There were just some things throughout that course of the game I feel like we could have capitalized on and really could have stretched the game further. You don't want a team like Philly you know, to stay in the game because you see what the outcome was. We, we, we lose in a field goal to overtime. And there was even a lot of BS that came with this roller coaster game. It was some questionable calls, a lot on the, the referees. And there was some things on us that we left points on the field too. I always got to hold us accountable because a lot of people, you know, me on social media, you know, I was questioning some calls. It was a call, you know, I understood the, the play concept when um, Slay was taking out the game. They wanted to attack Bradbury. And I believe it was, I forgot who, I think it was Bradbury and Blankenship. Like Blankenship came like a little bit later in the picture. And then like, I guess like he was trying to, you know, ruin the adjustment, you know, get in, in front of like the army. He kind of like grabbed and, and shrugged him like, and he couldn't really like put his hands up. And it's like, wow, we don't get a PI call for that. But they called the PI on, I believe, Kendall Fuller. Like when AJ Brown like caught the ball out of bounds and he bobbed but he didn't he didn't even come down with it like even if um that was a catch without the pass interference he didn't even make the, the catch because you know he didn't bring corral the ball and bring it down when he was hitting the ground before he hit the ground but that right there in itself is crazy the defense Jesus Cody Barton man watching him in person has had to be some of the worst I've ever seen and you know, like seeing it on TV, don't make it like, you know, when you're in person, especially if you're sitting somewhere on the field, you get a good seat, you get to see certain things. Like, I, I just don't understand and, and why Jack, he leans on like these guys who long, he doesn't even make adjustments in the lineup. Like he just says, oh, these guys have to play it out. I feel like you at the point of you being a coach, like your fourth year with this staff, y'all don't really have time to like, you know, do things like that no more. Cody Barton is only here for like, he only signed a one year contract for about two mil or something like, man, we might have to call up Jabril Cox, see what Khalid Hudson can do. Can we like mix it up? Like we don't even like really mix things up outside of the line. Like I see like the line rotations and I understand it. I know we are really deep as far as like our defensive tackles and our ends 
and I like that. But our linebacker position is killing us. Like, it, it really has shown the last two games. Really has shown all year. But Cody Barton, man, it, it, you really start to think about Cole Holcomb. Like, you really start to be like, okay, we want to put faith in this guy. You know, we're only four games in because in the next 13 games or so, he, he can come through and have some games. But he's really going to have to step it up moving forward because we play on Thursday. And, and this, I don't want to have to say it's a must win, but it's, it's a we better win. Just put it like that. It's, it's, it's really not a must win, but it's a we better win because over these last several years and within like the first five games of the year, I'm tired of us being one and four, um, oh and five, two and three. Like I want to be in a position where we're in a, a over 500 and we aim to keep growing. We aim, aim to keep growing, but back to um, how Sam performed. He had was 29 to 41. You know, he, he could have. He could have hit the 300 mark today, 290. You know, I mean, that last play where um, it was, I believe it was third down, third and five. And, you know, he had that back, he had that throw off the back foot and he got it to Terry. That was actually a good throw. And it, I believe it was a good catch, but they say he was out of bounds. Now, I want to know where in the yearbook, I mean, sorry about that, where in the rule book is like, how is that out of bounds? Because it's Terry foot comes down in bounds, but it comes inbounds on on the defender his arm now i i want to know like you know where in the rule book you know is, is his arm not a part of the field like because i know there's on certain plays like i remember um when they used to always try to say well a player his hair is a part of the field like when when um it was a during a period where some of the guys they were grabbing like you know running backs and, and receivers their dreads their locks or whatever and they'd be like oh well it's a part of the jersey so like, w w like, h how does this play out? Like, I just need to know where in the rule book to, to turn where so it's like it's incomplete because that was a catch. Like, I just need to know because even the guy, I think Mike Pereira on Fox, like, even he wasn't even too sure about it, but he was like, more than likely it's going to be called incomplete. He did know that, but the thing is, like, how was it not a catch? Like, because it's like, is it any like a rule that constitutes this? I just want to know. Because a lot of people are like, oh, you're being biased and all this and that. But I, they couldn't answer my question. They just want to troll. And you know what trolls and stuff do online, especially when they're from a rival fan base. But I do feel like we got work by the referees. Of course, that's going to that's gonna come with the territory. And I don't want to put too much weight upon, like, oh, we lost the game solely on the referees because there were some things we could have did to clean this up before the half. Like, the catch that Devonta Smith made before the half, like, I mean, Forbes did make a good play on it, but it's just like, man, it's just like these guys and these hell merge and these long lucky passes, man. Like, it just, it's just, why they got to do it on us? And, you know, I was also kind of mad that Ben St. Juice was not matched up against A.J. Brown. Now, a lot of people on social media these last few weeks, they've been pulling up analytics. And if you watch my channel, you know I'm not heavy on analytics, like, how everybody else is with the PFF grades and all this and that. You know, I understand it and I'm, I'm starting to understand how they scale and what is it based on, like the performance and all that. Um, I, I get it to an extent. I understand, but it's still somebody else's opinion at the end of the day. They're just putting a grade and a rate next to it. Um, and I, I see a lot of guys bringing this up while Emmanuel Forbes is in a bum. I'm, I'm, I'm old school. I'm eye test. I'm eye test first. It, it's still guys like it's us that exist that are eye test. And we just go based upon logic and physics. I already was kind of scared about this. I remember when we draft Forbes. That's the first thing I was upset about. I'm like, you telling me this guy's going to be matched up against A.J. Brown? Are you serious? Like, what if he one-on-one -on -one in the open field? How is he going to tackle him? And um, the first touchdown Brown caught, like, Brown went like 59 yards. I, I don't even think Forbes even tried to tackle him. Like, if you go back to the footage, I don't, I don't recall that. Like, and that's what I was kind of like, man, is he going to try to pursue, like make a pursue on the play a tackle? A few guys missed tackles. Derek Forrest missed some tackles. And even the play, that's why I said I don't want to put all of this on the refs or the, on the Zebras, but they did have some conspiring behind this. And I know a lot of people can be like, oh, you just saying that because you lost, uh -huh, whatever. But they, I feel like they conspired behind this, this bit of a comeback and this dramatic win on the Eagles side. But it was some missed tackles. And like, 
I thought we would clean all of this up in Del Rio. Like, man, he's too, like, relaxed on these guys, man. Far as from what I see in the media, like, in the press and how he can, he's just too relaxed, man. And these, if somebody in that locker room, I know we had Jonathan Allen, Chase Young. Like, we really have to hold each other accountable. Like, these schemes, like, somebody needs to call out Jack or something. Like these schemes and all this soft, weak zone that's being exploited where it's always a receiver open in the middle of the field. It just seems like a receiver is always open no matter who we play. You know, you're going to have like a guy that's just going to one day, you know, he's going to place his bet or um, however the on the spread, however that go. They're going to see they, they match up against us and see how our defense play. They're going to probably put their money on some random tight end or receiver to have a good game because these random players, Players that don't even really do nothing against other teams, they just fi always find the sweet spot in our defense. And it's like, it's been exploited. You have to change it. Once something is exploited or put out there in your ingredients of, of what works for you and how it works and, and how to take, we know how to take away from it. So once it's been put online, you're gonna have to change the, the formula. You're gonna have to change, you know, the compound ingredients. It's not working, mix it up, do something else. But other than that, we really have some work to go moving forward. I guess these last two games was a testament to where we're at. It showed that we do have some grit because that that hum we needed that humbling experience in Buffalo, especially Sam. And I like how Sam responds. Like we have to give him credit for that. Eb, I just wish you just played more of a short and sweet game. You know, we fixed this this line with the run block because one week, some weeks the run blocking looks okay, especially in like the second half, but. I feel like we got to stick more to our bread and butter. We still finding ourselves. So I don't want to make this too much longer. We don't, we're not lifting our left hands up this week. We, we lose in Philly in overtime, 34-31. I'm not a big fan of more victories. We, we're past more victories. We, we three, four years, four or five years into this program. You, you, you hear me? So like, comment, share, and subscribe in the comments. Till my next video, man. Hail to the Washington Commanders. Peace. I'm out.